Hello, my name is Kainton DeGenius, and today we are going to be looking at simple linear regression in Python using Jupyter Notebook. The problem many people have is that they don't understand how easy regression is. So it's a simple concept that goes this way. If you are given a data set, let's say you have X and you are given Y and you are given certain data sets, now the question is, what is the relationship between x and y? What is the function of x that produces y? f of x is equal to y, so what is f of x? So this is the problem of regression. You are given a data set, and you don't know the function, and you need to find the function. The easiest way to do this is to simply plot the graph like this. You plot the graph, so you have your data set, and you plot the graph. And then you find the intercepts in the y-axis called c, and you also find the slope of this graph called m. So if you know the slope and the intercept, you simply write the function in this way, y is equal to mx plus c. So you see how easy. So regression says find this line that passes through your data set. Now, sometimes you might be given a data set like x1, x2, and you have y. So the same principle applies, but in this way, we are going to simply write this in a, a bit different way. So we say y is equal to beta x plus beta 0, beta 1x plus beta 0, right? So we have if we want to now use the two, we have y is equal to beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 0. The same way if y is 3, let's say we have x3. If x is 3, I mean, so you have a data set in this way, you have that f of x, f of x1 to 3 is equal to y, which is equal to, let's start with beta 0 this time, beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3. So the problem of regression is find these betas, right? And these betas, they are called regression coefficients. They are called regression coefficients. So all the problem of regression simply has to do with finding the regression coefficients and then how to do it, you first plot uh, the line, the, the, the data set and pass a line through the data set and then find the equation for this line. It's a bit easy when you have just one x but if you have more than one, x1, x2, x3, it becomes a little bit difficult, and that is why we are going to use Python to solve this problem. So this is simple linear regression, so if you understand this, then you can also understand polynomial regression and other kinds of regression. So let's go ahead to start. So for us to start, I'm going to show you the, the steps to follow in Python. So if you have Python, you are going to follow these steps to solve it, the first thing you do is to import pandas library. Remember in Python, we use a whole lot of library. So in this tutorial, you are going to learn about three or four libraries. So pandas is one of them. Then we're also going to import our data set. After importing our data set, we view it inside Jupyter Notebook. Then we're also going to use another library called Seaborn and Matplotlib. These libraries are used to visualize your data. The next thing we are going to do is do a pair plot of your data. So if you have something like x1, x2, x3, right, and you have y. So pair plot says you plot x1 against y, you plot x2 against y, and you plot x3 against y. So these are three different plots. Uh, to see how these different variables relate to y. This is not the regression, it's just a pair plot. So that is one way we can examine our data. The next thing we are going to do, we are going to separate this data into two. We are going to split it 
uh, remove the, the features, which is x1 to x3 in a separate table, and then we remove y in a separate table, and that is what we are going to do in when we extract the features. We examine x, we extract the output variable y, we examine y, then we import uh, the library for splitting. I'm going to tell you about this. The next thing we are going to do is to split the data into training and test data sets. So you should have some idea of machine learning by now, but if you don't, no problem. I'm going to explain it as we go. Then we perform the regression and then we view the regression coefficient. I hope this has been clear. So let's go ahead to do it. So if you if you have Python installed, that is fine. It is free. So if you don't have it, just download it from python.org and install it in your system. If you install it, it comes with uh, with Jupyter Notebook, which is the, the tool we are going to use. So I'm going to show and I'm going to go out to my system and open uh, Jupyter Notebook. So when you install Python, you click on your start menu, you see Anaconda. On the Anaconda, you can look for Jupyter Notebook. So this is Jupyter Notebook. I click on it and it starts running. So the first thing it does is open the server. That is the black screen you, the black screen you saw just now. And then this is Jupyter Notebook is actually on a web interface. It opens on a browser. So I'm going to create a new notebook. So to create a new notebook, simply go to the, the right. So you can see new here, right? Good. So drop down and choose Python 3. As of now, this is the latest version of Python. Just choose Python 3 and it opens. I'm going to be explaining how to use Jupyter Notebook as we move along. So the first thing I want to do is to save this uh, Jupyter Notebook. Now you can see it is untitled type. So I'm going to say file. I'm going to say rename. And I'm going to call it regression tutorial. OK, so just rename. And that is fine. So it gives the right name. So let's look at the first step. The first step is import pandas library. So you do that in a single line that says import pandas as pd. So you can also say, uh, okay, you can also say from pandas imports all, which is tab. So this is the same thing. So maybe we can just leave the two. So if you click on run, it runs. When you click on this run, if it runs successfully, it will move down to another cell. So these are called cells. So here we have two cells right now. So we've done the first one. So I'm going to say done. All right. So we are going to import our data set. I have the data set in my computer and I'm going to import it. Okay, import it right now. So I'm going to write the line to import data set. It says data is equal to, if I'm importing this data set, I'm going to save it in a variable called data. Data is equal to PD. Remember, we imported pandas as PD. And we are going to use pd.read csv. CSV is the is a is a is the format of the file we want to read. So we are using a pd.read csv. So we are going to specify the location of the file. So I think I have it in drive D. Uh, advertising dot csv. All right, so let's see if everything goes well. So I've imported this data. I'm going to write the line that you can use to import this data from online. So because this data is in my drive D, but if you don't have this data already, because right now, if you look at the description box of this video, below this video, you can see a link to this data. But if not, I'm going to write out the directory that contains uh, this data online. So pd.read 
CSV. So um, you can this HTTP www. Uh, this is hyphen bcf bcf dot usc dot edu slash. Uh, then we're going to use uh, the symbol called uh, tilde symbol. So I'm using the Hungarian keyboard, so I have to change to to Hungarian to be able to type this uh, tilde symbol. And I'm going to go back to English. So Gary slash ISL slash advertising dot CSV. So this is the, the the location of the data. So if I run, it also runs correctly. Okay, so we have a little problem. So it tells me um, some problem HTTP BCF. Okay, I, I'm writing B, BCF. That is the name. Okay, fine. So everything runs correctly. So import our data set. Done. So now the next thing is to view our data set. So one way to view our data set is to simply type the name. To view our data set, you, data set, you can simply say data. And then you go ahead to run it. So it displays all the data. So this is what the data looks like. Two, 200 rows by five columns. All right. Um, I want to now show you uh, one single command to view the, the first five rows of the data and also the last five rows of the data. In case the data is too large and it's, and it's very difficult uh, to, for you to scroll. So you simply say data.h. So this is going to show us the first five row of the data. So after typing data.h, I'm going to say run and it displays the first five rows. Now I want you to observe something. You see this unnamed, unnamed is, is, say, is saying zero. So that does not make much sense to me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this unnamed. So I'm going to just set the index column to be this first column, right? So what we are saying in effect is Python adds one more column to be the serial number column. So I'm going to remove it because I already have an index column. So to do that, you simply go back to the same place where we imported our data and simply add to this line, you can just say index call equal to the first column, which is column zero. So if I run it now, if I run it, run, it's fine. So if I run the second line, so you can see uh, it goes out. So if I go down, I can as well come here and say run. So you can see the unnamed uh, column goes away. So I can view the last five rows by saying data dot tail. Right. So this will show me the last five rows of my data. So let's see. So this is the last five rows, 196 to 200. So let's go back to see where we are. We, we have succeeded in viewing our data site. So I'm going to mark this as done. So the next thing I'm going to do is import libraries for plotting because we need to plot some graphs. So let's import the libraries. So to do that, you simply say, um, let's see. Let's see the name of the library is Seaborn and Matplotlib. So let's go ahead to import it. So you simply say import Seaborn as SNS. So that's we it has a short name. So I'm also going to say Matplotlib. So in this way, in line. Uh, it helps me to be able to plot a graph inside this notebook. So I'm going to run it. Run. Okay, fine. So 
I'm going to come here and just say, well, I'm going to say done. I hope you are following this. The next thing I'm going to do is to do a pair plot or pairwise plot of my data. So I already explained to you pairwise plot. You plot x1 against y, you plot x2 against y, plot x3 against y, and you have to you get about uh, the number of plots equal to the number of pixels or the number of x's you have in your data set. So let's get back to our notebook. So to do that, you use SNS uh, Cbon. It helps us to do that. And we imported it dot pair plots. Yeah, so we are doing a pair plot of our data set data. Let's say we have TV, radio, and newspaper against sales. So we're actually plotting TV against sales, radio against sales, and newspaper against sales. So x variables equals. So it will be equal to TV. And is and the next one is what? Radio. So try to understand this uh, the syntax of this very command because it's very important. Newspaper. So we are actually telling uh, Python that we are taking TV, radio, and newspaper, the three columns, because we, I'm giving out the column name column names in this line. So TV, radio, and newspaper are the columns, and we are going to plot each of them against sales. So I'm going to tell Python that it's going to plot against y uh, variables should be sales equal to sales. So understand what is happening here. So you have TV, radio, and newspaper. They are the variables x1, x1, x3, and sales is y. So it's going to do a pair plot against uh, sales. So so let's see. Let's let's just run it to see how it is. Then we continue discussing. All right. So you can see how it is. So TV against sales. Let me make it a little bigger. So to make it a little bigger, I'm simply going to. I'm simply going to change the aspect ratio and maybe the size of the screen. So uh, let's go back to the pair plot and just say. So let's just say uh, size equal to seven. Let's say aspect ratio. Aspect is equal to 0 0.7. You can use something bigger uh, if you want. So let's see. Let's just, just say another thing. Kind is equal to. You may not worry about this. All right. So. If I run this now, let's see how it is good. So this is what we want to achieve. So it actually plotted this data and actually tried to fit a line through this data set. So here it tells us how does TV relate to sales, how does radio relate to sales, and how does newspaper relate to sales. So now we have come to number one, number five. I'm going to now end this video so that we can start in the next part because I have time constraint. So we've completed one to five. Kudos to you. Remember to subscribe if this has been informative for you. And we'll see you in the second uh, lesson.